Good morning. My name is Jordan Badu. I'm a postdoc in Professor Anthony Gerbic's lab in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Michigan. I'm here today to present to you our work on passive reflective metasurfaces for far field beam forming. When tasked with forming a particular pattern in the far field, phased array antennas come to mind first. In phased array, the complex excitation coefficients for each element can be designed into the feed network. The far field patterns were related to the aperture field set up by the antenna elements by the Fourier transform. Since the aperture field is effectively discretized, nearly any aperture field can be synthesized by the radiating element. In this way, the phased array can do passive beam forming. The phased array, however, suffers from high insertion losses due to the thin traces carrying high current densities. It also requires, in some cases, multilayer PCBs, vias, and is thus difficult to manufacture. Another choice is shaped reflectors. By shaping both the subreflector and main reflector in a dual reflector configuration, most any far field pattern can be synthesized. This system is bulky and takes up a lot of volume, however. Slotted waveguide arrays can also be used for pattern synthesis. The slots can be tuned in position and length to obtain array element excitation coefficients with both amplitude and phase control. This system may be narrow banded. Finally, multilayer metasurfaces can provide both amplitude and phase control. However, these structures require multiple layers. Our approach avoids all of these drawbacks and simplifies the fabrication of our, simplifies the fabrication. Arbitrary pattern synthesis can be performed by patterning the upper copper layer on a single commercially available substrate. In our approach, both the amplitude and the phase of the desired scattered aperture field is stipulated arbitrarily. This stipulation may not lead to a lossless metasurface since the desired transformation may require loss and or gain at different points along the metasurface. By introducing surface waves which carry power transversely along the metasurface, the desired transformation can occur in a passive and lossless manner. The surface waves are evanescent and thus do not contribute to the far field. It should be noted that the introduction of surface waves to achieve passivity was first pointed out in reference one. However, here we apply the concept of beam forming. The design of the beam forming metasurface will occur in three phases. In phase one, the metasurface metallic cladding is homogenized. Using the desired defined total field of the transformation, an EFIE is written and solved for the induced surface currents. The impedance boundary condition is then used to relate the induced surface currents back to the desired total field. This relation allows one to solve for the required surface impedances to achieve the desired field transformation. As alluded to before, without the surface waves, loss and or gain is required and thus the sheet impedances are complex valued. In phase two, the complex valued sheet impedances are converted to purely reactive impedances by way of gradient descent optimization. More details of the optimization process will be given in the slides to follow. In phase three, the purely reactive impedance sheet is realized through patterning of the metallic cladding of the RF substrate. Metasurfaces are constructed from sub-wavelength inclusions. Since these inclusions are sub-wavelength, they operate in the quasi-static regime, and the responses can be averaged over the unit cell they occupy. This allows a complex geometry to be replaced by a simple sheet impedance, eta sheet. In this regime, the metasurface and the homogenized sheet share the same scattering parameters. Thus, one can relate the desired S parameters to the sheet impedances and vice versa. These relationships are shown on this slide. The formulations are for the general case of infinite homogeneous bi and isotropic sheet boundaries, which are assumed infinitely thin. In these types of boundaries, electric surface currents are excited by both electric and magnetic fields. Similarly, magnetic surface currents are excited by both electric and magnetic fields. The sheet impedances thus contain an electric surface emittance, Y, a magnetic surface impedance Z, and a magnetoelectric and electromagnetic surface impedance chi and gamma. In this work, we will consider finite sized inhomogeneous metasurfaces which support only electric currents, which are excited by electric fields only. Thus, the metasurface is described by the electric surface emittance Y only. Furthermore, we will model the actual thickness of the metasurface rather than assuming it is infinitely thin. The boundary condition then collapses into the impedance boundary condition shown in the blue outline shaded box. The metasurface considered is invariant in one dimension and consists of a pattern metallic cladding supported by a grounded dielectric spacer. The pattern metallic cladding is homogenized as part of the design phase one into an inhomogeneous array of homogenized sheet impedances as shown in the lower portion of the slide. The impedance boundary condition is expanded to include both the incident and scatter fields explicitly stated. Design phase one will be broken down into four steps. In step one, the desired scattered electric field will be stipulated. 
Since the incident field is assumed known, the desired total field is now defined. From the impedance boundary condition in step two, the scattered field is expressed in terms of the spatial convolution of the induced surface currents with the associated Green's function. The impedance boundary condition is now expressed in the form of an integral equation as all quantities are known except for the induced surface currents appearing in the integrand. The integrand or the integral is transformed into a matrix equation following from the method of moments and solved on the computer for the induced surface currents in step three. Finally, in step four, we return back to the impedance boundary condition with the desired total field and the solved for induced surface currents to obtain the required sheet impedances necessary to achieve the field transformation between the incident and scattered field defined in step one. We will dig into these four steps further in the following slides. As discussed, both the amplitude and phase of the desired scattered field is stipulated as part of the design. In this work, we will define the amplitude as a Taylor aperture distribution that has a maximum side lobe level of minus 20 dB and the phase as a linear phase gradient to scan the beam to 30 degrees out broadside. The incident field is that radiated by an electric line source and hence is a cylindrical wave. Both the incident and scattered field are shown plotted in the figure in the lower right with the incident field in the blue curve and the scattered field in the red curve. Note the Taylor aperture distribution defines only the shape of the scattered aperture field amplitude, not the absolute level in volts per meter. To define this, we ensure that the total integrated power of the normal component of the pointing vector at the metasurface plane is equalized between the incident field and the scattered field. This equality ensures global power conservation and is necessary step to achieve a passive and lossless metasurface in the end. As discussed in step two, the impedance boundary condition is expressed as an integral equation. The integral equation is shown in the center of the slide. The metasurface, is the metasurface it describes is a 16 lambda naught wide and lambda naught by 23.62 thick. The electric line source is placed at a distance of four lambda naught above the metasurface. The frequency of operation is 10 gigahertz. Note the volumetric impedance of the dielectric layer is defined following from volume equivalence principle and is shown in red text in the upper right corner of the slide. And by definition, the ground plane is assumed perfectly conducting. In step three, the integral equation is transformed into a matrix equation by the method of moments. Solving the matrix equation in step four leads to the desired sheet impedances. As alluded to before, the sheet impedances are complex values are complex valued with both real and imaginary parts. The real part takes on both positive and negative values indicating the need for lossy and active elements. These types of elements are difficult to manufacture and thus are undesired. Satisfying the boundary condition required complex impedances since the local normal power density was not conserved. By adding surface waves, the boundary condition can be satisfied in a passive manner, resulting in a lossless sheet. The question is which surface waves are required and how to find them. We will use an optimization approach to find the necessary surface waves to add. To set up the optimizer, we will first investigate the effects of removing the resistances and keeping only the reactances. We will denote this sheet as the unoptimized reactive sheet. Shown in this slide is the far field scattered by the unoptimized reactive sheet compared to the far field scattered by the complex sheet. By discarding the resistances, the far field pattern has degraded. By back projecting the far fields to the metasurface plane, it can be seen that the scattered aperture field amplitude is, deg is degraded, yet the phase is intact. This is because the phase comes primarily from the reactances. Since the phase is not affected, we can use this unoptimized reactive sheet to see the optimizer. And since the far field pattern is most sensitive to phase errors, the gradient descent optimizer will not descend in a direction which would disrupt the aperture field phase as that would cause the pattern to degrade significantly. Therefore, we can build the cost function around the far field pattern amplitude alone. Thus, both the seed and the cost function for the optimization is defined. The optimizer will be seeded with the kept reactances of the complex valued sheet with discarded resistances. The cost function will be formulated around the farfield pattern of the complex sheet as the RMS error between the farfield patterns of the complex sheet and the optimized reactive sheet. The cost function and seed are defined, but how about the optimization domain boundaries? To answer this question, we investigate the surface wave supported by the capacitive sheet over the grounded dielectric substrate. By using the transverse resonance technique, the dispersion relation for the capacitive sheet over a grounded dielectric slab is found. This dispersion relation can be solved at a single frequency for the surface wave number as a function of the capacitive sheet admittance. This relation is shown in the figure to the right. It is observed that low negative capacitive reactances lead to very high tangential wave numbers associated with the surface wave. This is undesirable, as will be seen in the next slide, and hence the reactances must be limited to avoid these high surface wave numbers. Note, since the sheet is open at both ends and it is finite, 
The surface waves will reflect from each end, setting up standing waves. The amplitude of the surface current standing wave will be proportional to cosine beta Sx. In this slide, the surface waves are computed in console multiphysics by illuminating the metasurface from above by unit amplitude normally incident plane wave. The sheet impedance carries a surface reactance of minus J6.66 ohms, which from the dispersion relation corresponds to a surface wave number of approximately 6,000 radians per meter. The finite ends of the metasurface cause the excitation of the surface waves. The standing wave formed by the surface waves are shown plotted in the figure to the lower right. The analytic formula predicts the full wave simulation results perfectly. Plotted in the same figure is the individual metasurface element width of lambda naught by 20. As can be seen, the current varies over the surface drastically and hence the fields and currents cannot be homogenized over an element of this width. As the figure in the lower left shows, if instead the capacitive reactance is limited to less than minus J40 ohms, then the current varies only little over the element and hence the element can be homogenized. Thus, to a, thus, the upper limit of the optimization domain boundary is defined as minus J40 ohms. To avoid high losses associated with thin traces, we will avoid inductances and also very large negative capacitive reactances. Thus, the lower limit of the optimization domain is limited to minus J1000 ohms. With all of the optimization parameters defined, the optimization is run to obtain the purely reactive metasurface which achieves the same field transformation as a complex valued metasurface does. The results are shown in this slide. The far field patterns of both the reactive metasurface and the complex valued metasurface agree excellently, indicating the, most fun indica indicating the cost function was minimized. The optimized reactances are shown in the lower portion of the figure on the right hand side. As can be observed, the real part is zero and the reactances are between minus J40 and minus J1000 ohms. The amplitude spectrum plot of the total electric field at the metasurface plane shown in the lower left of the screen shows the introduced surface waves, which aid in obtaining a passive and lossless metasurface. The complex sheet shows no evanescent spectrum, whereas the optimized reactive sheet contains significant evanescent content. Note these surface waves and the associated optimized reactances are non-intuitive and could not be obtained in an analytic way. Finally, note the visible part of the total field amplitude spectrum agree well, indicating that both sheets scatter the same radiative near and far fields. The optimized reactive metasurface was modeled in COMSOL, multiphysics, and simulated. The results shown in the polar plot on this slide validate the optimized reactive sheet through full wave simulation. The far fields of both the optimized reactive sheet and the complex valued sheet were back projected to the metasurface plane and compared. As can be seen, both the far field and the radiative near field are synthesized by the optimized reactive sheet. This result shows that both the far field and the radiative near field are controlled by the metasurface, which was optimized by comparing the far fields only. This was alluded to before and now verified here. Since the metasurface relies on surface waves with potentially high wave numbers, it is important to investigate the effect of element loss on the performance. The pattern metallic cladding elements were placed in a waveguide to emulate a periodic environment and excited with a plane wave. Both the real part and the imaginary part of the Z12 impedance parameter was extracted as a function of the geometry. The resistance of the elements are plotted against the reactants in the figure in the upper left of the slide. From this relationship, one can find the resistances associated with the optimized reactances as shown in the figure in the upper right of the slide. Using both the resistances associated with element loss and the reactances of the optimized sheet, the far field pattern was solved for. The polar plot shows the comparison between the optimized reactive sheet including loss agrees well with the complex valued sheet. This result is only possible since we avoided high loss elements when we defined the optimization domain boundaries. Careful attention to these details are what make these simple passive and lossless beamformers possible. It is also important to investigate the bandwidth of the metasurface. The 1 dB bandwidth was solved for and plotted here. The results show the optimized reactive metasurface exhibits a 16.28% fractional bandwidth. In conclusion, we have presented a design approach for passive lossless metasurface far field beamformers made from single pattern RF substrates. The key is the introduction of surface waves, which add to the total field associated with the desired transformation, which act to satisfy local conservation of normal power density, leading to passive lossless sheets. By carefully paying attention to the excited surface waves, the elements are homogenizable. By limiting the element reactances, lossy elements can be avoided. By modeling the actual finite width and thickness, the metasurface becomes practically realizable. Thank you for your time.